Većina moje familije je pobijena, odvedena u logor, Omarska, Trnopolje. Nema tragova da su živi. Međutim, jedan stric iz starog Majdana, on je doveden ovdje u Sasinu i ubijen. Sin od drugog strica, on je na jedan zvjerski način, i to od svoga komšije, ubijen. Vezan je na traktor lancima i vučen je po, mi kažemo, čaršija, po trgu. The most constant companions of Dr. Samira Message are the dead. She is literally digging up evidence of genocide. In one year, 15 mass graves have been exhumed around Sansky Most. Here we have 120 bodies. Znači, radi se o civilima, ženama. Najstarija žena je preko 94 godine, stara. Djeca su 13 godina. Djeca imamo mlađih žena do 20 godina i muškaraca. Strašni su zločini napravljeni na ovom terenu. Ovo je samo jedan dio što mi imamo. Što se tiče ovo sa što gledamo, to je... Oni su vatrenim oružjem gađani i imamo elemenata nanošenjem tu potvrdim predmetom. It's Dr. Message's job to identify the dead and to discover how they died. Znači, ovdje se radi o muškarcu. Leš je skeletiran. Ostali su dijelovi kosti i dijelovi odjeće. Znači, ovdje se vidi tkanina. Samo su dijeli, tu se ne može opisati kako je tkanina, boja. Ko drugi se možda može. Zato jako i teško odgovoriti, identificirati tijelo, znate. Međutim, što se tiče ovdje povreda, ja mogu pokazati da su to kosti, duge kosti i da su tu povrede, to su prilomi nanešeni iz vatrenog oružja. Ne samo to, tu imamo povredu glave koja je nanešena isto iz vatrenog oružja. Vidite ovdje. Ovdje se vide njegove čizme, ostala je čarapa, dio stopala. I onda tu mjerimo na osnovu kosti. Dr. Mesić je kataloging the injuries and identifying the victims, not only for proper burial, but as evidence for the Hague War Crimes Tribunal. Ovo je negdje srednja dob u starosti muškarci. Tadić Drago. Tadić Drago i on je pronađen zajedno sa ostalima u masovnoj grobnici Škrljevita. To je ovdje blizu Sanskog mosta. As we drove into town, the list of the dead from the gravesite, finally identified by Dr. Mesić, was being read out on local radio. Benić Sulejmana Nijaz, ubijen 9.10.1995. godine. Zulić Halila Muhamed, ubijen 9.10.1995. godine. In Sansky Moss, these lists have been broadcast regularly since work began to find the missing. The people here consider themselves survivors. Many of them only know each other because they met in the concentration camps of Omaska, Manyacha, Keraturm and Trinopoli, all in nearby towns. We were here to meet the man who'd survived the camps and come back to prosecute those responsible for the killings. In May of 1992, Judge Adil Draganovic was arrested in his office and sent to Manyacha along with 6,000 other civilian prisoners. He lived through the ordeal until the camp was shut down after international pressure. And when he finally got back to his office in 1995, he found documents the retreating Serbs had left behind. We found their documents from the crisis staff, 
sve ono što su znači planirali, dogovarali, to su sve izabilježili. Našao sam znači taj rokovnik u kojem je sve lijepo zacitano, planirano koga ubiti, napad na ovo područje, na ovo šta sa stanovništvom učiniti, preostalim, ali decidno se kaže koga treba uhapsiti i koga treba ubiti. Using the documents and accounts of eyewitnesses, Judge Draganovic has overseen the exhumation of more than 700 bodies from secret grave sites like this one at Lanishte. Vjerojatno ste bili gore na Lanište, vidjeli ste onu jamu gdje su ubili oko dvije stotine ljudi, bacili u tu jamu, sakrili to zemlju, mislim da se nikako neće otkriti. Investigators from The Hague assess the evidence and use it in indictments against men like the recently deceased Simo Drljaca, the Priador police chief whom the judge grew up with. Yes, Simo Drljaca is here, born in Sansko Most, here he lived and we were together in Sarajevo. I izvanredno smo se poznavali. Međutim, pokazao se kao jedan okrutni zločinac, jer je kao najodgovorniji čovjek policije odgovoran za likvidacije nekoliko hiljada prijedočana Bršnjaka i Hrvata. Many of the people in Sanski Most are refugees from Prijedor, only 30 kilometers north and the town with the highest concentration of indicted war criminals in Bosnia. Momarska concentration camp uh, is only a few kilometers from a uh, uh, Prijedor town, in a, uh, near a little uh, village uh, called Omarska. Uh, the people who were in charge of that uh, camp are still in the area. The same people who directed the atrocities during the, uh, the war, who were responsible for the atrocities during the war, are still uh, in charge or, or influencing the political events in, uh, in the area, in the region. Many of the people who can still unveil those stories, the witnesses to Bosnia's war crimes, have scattered across the world as refugees. They're living temporarily in cities like Munich, too scared to return to their own corner of Europe. Germany has taken more than 350,000 Bosnian refugees. Mrs. Sabiha Tukanovic is a survivor of the Omaska concentration camp. She will be a witness at the Hague war crimes trials of the men from Priador who ran the camp. Her husband was at Omaska too, and in those days the couple were separated from their children who were imprisoned by the Serbs in another camp. They are Muslims from the town of Kozarats, and before the war they considered themselves well off. Imali smo trajekala u svom dvorištu. Da smo faktički sve svojih 30 godina braka, ja i on što smo radili, zarađivali, što jedli, da smo to sve ostali. In July 1992, the Tukanovićes were taken to Omaska camp to join thousands of other Muslims imprisoned there. 
The old iron mine is infamous for the brutality of its guards, who were under the direction of their chief, Simo Druljaccia. Muzika Pa koliko bi se našlo grobnica naših ljudi i okolcu Omarske. Jer samo najveće je neke prosječno deset neke vozito, a Bog zna koliko ih je vožena najveće u tom kombiju. The whole time in Omarska they were under the direct authority of Simo Drljača. Simo Drljača je, Simo Drljača ga odlično znam jer kad sam... There is no way now that they can get out until Simo Drljača signs them out. Right. He needed his signature for them to get out right. uh, to free country. Yeah. 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 We went back to Bosnia to the source of the problem. In Sarajevo, we sought out the man who's been one of the strongest advocates behind the scenes for the arrest of war criminals. And on the eve of his departure, as the second most powerful UN official in Bosnia, we spoke to Michael Steiner. The international community must make up uh, its mind what they want. If they really want Dayton to be implemented, um, this is an unavoidable issue. We assume there are contingency plans to arrest these people. This had been thought about. I don't want to go in the details. Um, uh, I don't think that that would be wise. Uh, I'm convinced it can be done. It's a question of the political will. That political will is about to be tested again after the intense reaction to the shooting of Simo Drljaccia. For the main targets, the real leaders of Republika Srpska, the indicted war criminals Karadzic and Mladic, will now be much more heavily protected. In the meantime, the people of the Bosnian diaspora are returning to a fractured country where the promises of Dayton are not being fulfilled. Suleimani Munevera. Again, the lists of people, this time of the living, followed by the intense relief of the displaced to be back amongst their families. Fifteen-year-old Rafik Shaban is reunited with his father, Mustafa. The family were cleansed from Priador by Duljaccia's police and imprisoned in the camps he ran at Omaska and Trinopoli and Keraturn. His mother never recovered from the experience. She died a refugee. They gave us an address in the destroyed outskirts of Sarajevo. Out past the old front line that divided the western sector of the city. Here we found, playing in the rubble, a group of Muslim children from Srebrenica, survivors of yet another massacre. And like so many others, unable to return to their city. We found Mustafa Shaban and his son 
living with several other families in an undamaged house. It had survived unscathed because it was behind the Serb lines and owned by a Serb who'd left with her own people, fearing reprisals if she stayed. Yet Mustafa told us he'd been reborn when his son came back because the boy represented a new life for his people. Treba da kažem, ova zemlja sad ima potrebu sa ljudi koji ima koji imaju veću školu. Ima potrebu sa za te ljude. Zato što mnogi su poginuli koji su imali veću školu, koji su bili na primjer direktori, profesori razni koji su bili sa školom. Želio bih sad da završim gimnaziju, želio bih da budem što veću da imam školu. Jer on je dobro malo prije rekao, jer dosta profesora, dosta inženjera, dosta ti we asked Mustafa if he'd ever be prepared to go back to Priador. You have a number of participants in the crimes and you have villages um, also in around Priador where, uh, and that's most frightening, uh, many of the population have taken part where it's not just uh, some representatives uh, but where uh, in some way um, uh, everybody was involved uh, in these crimes. From Sansky Most, the UN runs a special bus service the short distance north to Priador. A few Muslim refugees from the town, overwhelmingly women, take the trip to visit relatives. Plainly afraid to make themselves conspicuous, none of the women on the bus would talk to us but the knowledge that Priador had been a control centre of a string of concentration camps and that the people who set them up and planned the ethnic cleansing still run the city makes the trip a strange one. I felt sympathy for the women scurrying into town with their heads down. From the Hotel Priador we began calling the city's bosses to seek interviews. By now, Simo Druljaca held no official posts, though he reputedly headed a local mafia. We decided the best way to find him would be through his friend, Dr. Milan Kovacevic, the hospital director who has now become the first indicted war criminal to be arrested by NATO troops. We were told he was out of town. And when we informed the police we planned to film in the nearby town of Kozarats, we suddenly drew the attention of Serbian state security. Ah, we're in a bit of strife here. What's happened? Well, we just got a grilling from the state security guy. He doesn't want us to film in uh, Kozarats. In fact, he says we can't film in Kozarats unless we get permission from uh, Parley, from the Minister of Information, which we can't get. Well, he's probably rung them already. He's probably rung them. Well, that was our welcome to Priador, that's for yeah. sure. We decided to go to Kozarats the next day. The Turk Menovic family in Munich had drawn us a map to their house in Kozarats. But we soon realised there wouldn't be much left to see. That's what remains of a mosque. Must have been a beautiful mosque too. Look at the tiles on it. 
There's nothing left of it now. Why did they destroy everything? They've raised the place to the ground. If you destroy their houses, they have nowhere to live. Then you're guaranteed, more or less, they won't come back because they have nothing to come back to. It's quite eerie, actually, isn't it? The classic tale was that they would start shelling and to cause panic, they rounded them up and took most of the men to camps. They would have various collection centers not far from here where they would first move people and then decide what to do with them because it's a big organizational task, moving thousands of people. You know, it didn't happen haphazardly. Then, in the midst yeah. of the destruction, a bizarre sight, uh -huh. an intact house with a flourishing rose garden. Sonia, ask this lady how it feels <laughs> living here in such a nice house with a nice garden, but everything else is ruined. Her name was Mrs. Murgic, and she told us that her husband was a Croat, so her people, the Serbs, killed him. And they killed her only son too because his blood was mixed. So now she tends her roses, apparently drifting in and out of sanity and dreaming of her lost neighbours. <laughs> In Sansky Most, it was time to bury the dead. <laughs> The people here say they still can't believe that this could have happened in Europe on the eve of the 21st century, or that the worst murderers could still be living free a short drive from here. And I find myself wondering if I were burying my wife, or my children, or my parents, or my sisters here today, or if these were my friends or my neighbours, if they had been dragged from their homes like many of these people, in the middle of the night and slaughtered and thrown into a lonely pit and I had survived. And I know deep down that there can be no peace here without justice. For without justice, the living will surely seek revenge. It is sometimes said of Bosnian Muslims that they hide their grief, but today it was etched into their faces. But even here, there were signs of the divisions that destroyed the old Bosnia. The black draped coffins of the Catholic Croats were kept apart from the green covered Muslim coffins although they'd been together in death and were unearthed from the same pit. And I recalled what the pathologist, Dr. Message had said when we asked her the religion of one of the dead. To me, this is just a man. Thank you.